No, Sunshine, you're amazing. It's, it's amazing how the light is really bright on Facebook, but it's not on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I could. But sometimes it makes it worse. It didn't do anything. Chat was uh, right below. It's supposed to change. Yeah, it did. Oh, I gave him a view of outside. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could tap it and then turn around. Did y'all know that? You double tap it. Did y'all see the view? <laughs> Hey, good morning. How's everyone this morning? I did not know you could tap the screen and give you the view outside. 17 through 21. We're going to be in Genesis 15, 17 through 21 this morning. Good morning. Make sure you type in where you sign in from. I miss you all. We had a very eventful day yesterday. I had to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, please keep praying for us. We're here doing street evangelism this week. Uh, and we're in Chicago. And we're not over in the fancy areas we're over in the areas that are the most dangerous and so we had a very eventful day on yesterday and we'll be doing some more things today so please keep us in your prayers uh, we need them and we felt your prayers yesterday and we thank you for just you know praying for our protection which god did of course provide for us so love y'all very much won't hold you long this morning we'll be in genesis 15 17 through 21 today um i named it hold on in the fire Anybody besides me feel like you're in the fire this morning? That's a fire of refinement. It's not a bad thing. It's an uncomfortable thing, but it's definitely not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because we come out refined. We come out stronger than ever. We come out purified and ready to run and do the work that God has called us to do. So I love you all very much. Why don't we go into prayer before we do anything else at all? Father, we love you. We praise you. We bless you. We give you honor and glory for this day. Honor and glory for this time. It is such a privilege to serve you. It is an absolute honor to do life with the warrior nation and to study your holy word. It is our very life. Father, we thank you for that this morning. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher, and we need to hear from you this morning. Anybody need to hear a word this morning that's just perfect for you, just for you? Holy Spirit, you're able to do that to every single one of us. You're able to speak to our hearts in a way in which we understand, in a way in which will give us hope. And so we thank you this morning for the word that will come forth, that will touch our hearts. As a matter of fact, we ask you to create us clean hearts and renew the right spirits inside of us. In Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. You are our master and our savior and our true and risen king. And we thank you so much for the work of the cross, the ultimate sacrifice that you made for us. And we just thank you for that today. That because of the blood that you shed on Calvary, we have access to our father. We can just enter into the Holy of Holies like we're doing right now. And had you not died for us, we would not have that opportunity. And we also thank you for the blood because it has given us the gift of eternal life. We thank you that we can now spend eternity with our Heavenly Father because we've accepted you as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, we ask you to stretch this video far and wide. Warrior Nation, just say a prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, there are people out there who do not know you. And we really got a, a true taste of that on yesterday. There are so many people all over the world who don't know you, but also right here in our own neighborhoods, in our own communities, in our own states, in the United States of America, even just in the United States of America, where there's pretty much a church on every corner. There are still so many people walking around in darkness. But Father, we ask you to allow this video to be a light that will project into a dark, dark social media world because it's real and there are people who don't know you right here on our timelines every single day. Lord, we're willing to evangelize the gospel whatever way we can. And so we ask you for strategies this morning. We ask you to touch the hearts of the warriors that even if they've never shared the video before, that today you will touch their hearts. You'll help them to see the reality of this thing, Lord, that people do not know you. And they will share this video. Father, we'll be careful and quick to give you alone all the honor and glory your name rightfully deserves. Lord, we know how much you care about a soul. You'll leave the 99 to chase after the one because this is exactly what you did for every single one of us. Father, we bless your holy name. We magnify you. We reverence you. We exalt you. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for life. Even the air in our lungs, it, we, it doesn't belong to us. It's borrowed, and we just thank you for it, God. Bless us, Lord. Bless the warriors, Father. Give us a holy boldness in this season, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen warrior nation. Would you just throw me the weather forecast? I love you all. That's right. Thank God for another day. Thank him for breath. Air in our lungs. We don't even have to have that. I think whew, going out there yesterday really made me just even more appreciative than I already am for just what God is doing in my life. I mean, I'll tell you all about it in a minute. Let me give the weather forecast. Right now in Chicago, it is 68 with a high. Um, 
I can't read this. All right. Currently in Chicago, it is 68 degrees and sunny with a high of 75. We're in the Windy City. The winds are coming out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And that's what we're going to give you today because I can't understand what Brittany gave me. So, yeah. Right now, it's 68. Feels like 75, it says. And the high is 75 today. So, what's happening in your city or in your nation? What's your weather looking like in your area? Please type it in. We'll be in Genesis today, 15, 17 through 21. And I wrote in, hold on in the fire. Type it in. I will hold on in the fire. Listen, we cannot bypass our process. I talk about it all the time. I've learned. I'm learning what that means. You know, when God gives you a vision, of course, you're so excited and you run after that vision. But there's a process that comes with the manifestation of that promise. And we cannot bypass our refinement period, where we go through the fire of affliction, where we go through things, we suffer for things. Even if you may not have done anything wrong, you still have to suffer. It's just part of picking up that cross and bearing it the same way that Jesus Christ did. Um, before we jump into it, I want to let y'all know that we're still doing our clearance collection sale on the store. We'd appreciate it if you all would help us clear that out. There's still quite a few things over there. We've cleared out a lot of it. We have more. We're bringing in a lot of new items. And so, uh, Brittany will pin the link on Facebook. Is that already pinned, Brittany? Um, that you can go to the clearance collection on warrior-apparel.org. We have some other things there, too. If, you're, if you've got everything, buy something for somebody else. Help us evangelize the gospel. Um, help us fund wars. And this is how we do it, both in the store and through the ministry. And so we ask you to go there today. The discount code for the clearance collection is SAVE50, S-A-V-E-5-0. We ask you to go there today and, and pick up some items. And we thank you for it. Uh, the Lord will bless you for doing that, for helping us go further faster. Um, but with that being said, yesterday... We went out in Chicago. A lot of y'all who are from Chicago, you're familiar with, what is it, Martin Luther King Drive. They also call it Murder Drive because the crime rate is so high. So many drive-by shootings. Most of the businesses, any franchise or well-known business has been boarded up, shut down, those types of things. Um, we met at a cleaner's over there, and that same cleaner's was... Um, uh, there was some violence that took place there a few years ago. A, a lady who worked there had her 11-year-old daughter with her um, at work. And when she left, they walked out and they were caught up in gunfire. And the little girl lost her life, the 11-year-old girl. And that's the place where we met yesterday. And so it's real out, out there in the streets. And, you know, we're all for missions. We're all for just God using us in whatever way that he can to create a highway for the gospel to be evangelized. And so you already know that our mission is part of the Warrior Nation. Uh, it's to fund kingdom projects. And, you know, now we're saying that we're funding wars because that's exactly what we are doing. But not only in other nations, it's real right here for those of us who live in America. It is real. And so we went in what people call projects yesterday, um, low-income housing, where they, they put you really, really close together in these high, tall buildings. You've seen it on movies probably. That's the closest I've ever gotten to before. I've never been inside a project before. How privileged am I? I've never been inside projects. I don't know about you. You ever been inside projects before? And so you go inside the projects. We go inside one main door. We go into this tiny, tiny, tiny elevator, and there's urine all over the floor in the elevator. And like, this is real. It's hot in the projects. It's real in the projects. And there are a lot. there's a lot of darkness and oppression in the projects. And it, I was like, God, this is real. And so now my heart is even more burdened. Um, for ministry, it is even more burden to street evangelize. And I know that we took a risk going to those projects yesterday, but it was just a risk that I was willing to take. I mean, because like I said the other day on the video, I mean, what good is it if you go to church on Sunday, you take your little family to church and y'all go out to eat afterwards and you pick lilies. That is not the reality that we live in, y'all. There are people dying who do not know Jesus Christ. And so, yes, I believe in everything that I've been telling y'all and we're investors and we're walking in wealthy places and we're doing all these things. But y'all, we're not doing it just to be doing it. We have to take that strength that God has given us and truly spread the gospel. This is for real. Can you type it in this morning? This is for real. There is a war going on. Time is running out. And there are people all around us who do not know Christ. And, and, and it's a little scary and a little awkward you know, when you start trying to witness about Jesus, that's one of the things that I struggle with. How do you start a conversation? How do you approach someone and get to what you're really trying to get to and say, hey, is Jesus your Lord and Savior? How do you do that? And so what I've learned each time is different, but we pray for strategies. 
You know, ask God for a line, a hook, a way to bring somebody in if you're in the grocery store. Or in other words, y'all, we cannot keep walking around as good Christians like everything is all good and it's not. People are dying. Even in America, it's a war zone right here. And people don't know Jesus Christ. This is for real. And me going over there yesterday and getting inside the elevator would pee all over the floor. And other little kids have to get on the elevator. It's for real. The the comforts that we have are blessings. There are people who are living far in far worse condition than we are even on our worst day. I just want y'all to think about it today. I'm telling you, if you saw what we saw, it would make you reevaluate everything. Everything, the comforts that we enjoy. When we think our lives are so hard, you don't understand what other people go through. And that's not even talking about in third world countries that we will soon see. That's going to take take me to an even deeper level, another level of just gratitude. And so I just want us to be thankful today that, yeah, things may not be the way we would like them to be all the time. But why don't you just type in, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for what you have done for me. I mean, I'm telling you, there are people out there on the streets who are living way worse than we are even on our worst day. And so I just wanted to plug that in this morning. This is real. This is real. And you know, I mean, it's real. And it's hard. And if you have any type of spirit about you at all, if the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, there's no way that you can see these types of things and not feel the burden, not feel the oppression of people. And I understand why Nehemiah stopped, even though he, his assignment was to rebuild the walls. We studied it. I, and share the video, please. I understand now. I'm just talking to you this morning. I understand now why he had to stop when he heard the cries go out of the oppressed people. We're having to sell our own daughters to survive. And he had to step in and get some things in order and govern things. Because even though he was called to build the walls, he was called to rebuild the walls. We were called to unite this world in prayer. We were called to fund kingdom projects. We were called to fund wars. But how can we do those things and act as if we can't hear the cries of the oppressed? It's the same way that Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall, but he had to stop and figure out a way to answer the cries of the oppressed and set things back in order. And so I feel like, yes, we're, we're, we're uniting the world in prayer and we're funding wars, but we're also going to bring some order back. We're going to get moving as the body of Christ. We're not going to just sit on our porches and rocking chairs like everything is all good because it's not. It's a war zone out there. Kids are being killed. Bullets, straight bullets are going through windows while people are reading newspapers. It's serious. Somebody type in, it's serious. So now let's go into Genesis. It's what I mean by being in the fire. Every day is not going to be sunshine. Seriously. It's hard out there. Let's go into Genesis 15, 17 through 21. Let's finish up this covenant that God made with Abraham. Are y'all ready for the word? I love you all. You're seeing my heart get more and more tender. I feel myself changing. I feel my focus changing. It'll never shift from prayer. But my heart is so big for his people. And my heart is so big for the lost. And it is so tender for children. And that's where it should be. We carry the spirit of God in us. We can't walk around like everybody's saved. Just because you see a church on every corner does not mean your people are saved. Because you see people carrying a Bible does not mean that they're saved. Let's go into the word. Move my laptop over here. Are y'all ready? If I can get in it. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Somebody give it to me. I can't get in. I got it this time. No, I didn't. Give it to me. It shut down. Hold on, y'all. Just keep thanking the Lord while I'm pulling up my scripture. And it's not a long word today. That's right. Say a prayer for the lost today. Ask God to help us and give us strategies. Genesis 15, it's not long. Here we go, Genesis 15, 17 through 21. It says, after the sun went down, we know Abram waited a long time and darkness fell. He fell asleep. It says, after the sun went down and darkness fell, Abram saw a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch pass between the halves of the carcasses. We already know how he laid out the sacrifice. It says, after the sun went down and darkness fell, Abram saw a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the halves of the carcasses. So the Lord, in 18, so the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I have given this land, listen to this, I have given this land to your descendants all the way, all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. 
the land now occupied by the Kenites, Kenizzites, Kabanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Raphatites, Raphatites, y'all know whatever it is, them, Amorites, Canaanites, Gergesites, and the Jebusites. So what I want to point out here, I want to encourage you today to hold on in the fire. And this is why I say that. When God finished this with Abram, you know, he had already laid the sacrifice out there. And he waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and had to fight the buzzers off. And then all of a sudden, darkness falls and Abram sees a smoking fire pot. And that smoking fire pot, stay with me, that smoking fire pot represents the furnace of affliction. Type in furnace of affliction. Okay, let's get this. This is important. That smoking fire pot represented the furnace of affliction. It represented what the children of Israel were going to have to suffer through for 400 years. 400 years, not overnight, not for a week, not for two weeks, not for four weeks, but they had to suffer in their furnace of affliction for 400 years. They were oppressed. They were in bondage. They were slaves. Their eyes had become so dark that they couldn't even see their way out. They couldn't even see how God was going to bring them out. Many of them had forgotten all. They didn't even know about God. You know, they just didn't know. That's how difficult it was. They suffered for so long. And then God allows a flaming torch to pass through the house of the carcasses. That flaming torch is a light. A light. The light of his word. The light of his promise. And this is very simple this morning. When you're going through the fire, anybody besides me going through the fire, I used to kick against it. Why is this happening to me, Lord? You ever ask God why? Why is this happening to me, Lord? Why am I having to suffer through this? I thought things were going good. What happened? You ever had like a just a, some good days and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, did I miss it? Did I do something? What is this about? It doesn't necessarily mean that you did anything wrong. Remember, we rejoice in our suffering because of what it produces. It strengthens our character. It gives us hope. Hope will not put us to shame. And so when you're in that fire of affliction, God shows Abram the fire pot to signify the affliction, the furnace of affliction, but then he shows him a flaming torch, which signifies the light of his word, the light of his promise. And what does that tell us? That when we're going through the fire, we need to simply hold on to the light of his word. Simple but profound this morning. When you're going through and you don't know how God is going to bring you out because you can't, you don't have the ability to bring yourself out. God has to bring you out. But when you're going through what seems like hell, when you're going through the fire, when you know you're suffering, know that we have the privilege of his holy word. And this is what he's showing Abram. Listen, they're going to suffer for a long time, but this lamp signifies my promise. It is the light of my word and the light of his word in your life and in mine. It will light up any situation that you're in. I don't care how dark it is. If we have the word of God on the inside of us, that is what we hold on to when we're in the fire. Can anybody say, I'll hold on this morning, that I'm going to hold on. And yesterday is our destiny for donuts, is our corporate fast from sunup to sundown. If you're able to do that with us, we'd appreciate it. We do liquids from sunup to sundown. Today's Wednesday. We do it every single Wednesday to draw closer to the Lord and for the Lord to just increase us as a family, the warrior nation. But as I was saying, thank you for that. But yes. And so what I'm saying is when you're in the fire, it's simple this morning. You hold on to God's word. And then he says in 18, so he made a covenant with Abraham. Let me also say this. As that furnace, as that torch was going through, it is believed that it burned up the sacrifices to complete the sacrifice. And then the Lord comes in and says, I have made a covenant with Abraham. On this day, I have given this land to your descendants. He's already saying, I have given it to them. Even though they did not have possession of it. Just because you don't have possession of something yet does not mean that God has not given it to you. He says, I have given this land to your descendants all the way. He's showing them how much I have given them all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. He said, I know that these are currently occupied. This land is occupied by all these different nations, but I'm going to take from all these nations to give to you. God will break protocol for you. God will take from one unworthy person or a group of people or whatever the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous it's already laid up for us we have nothing to worry about the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous we talked about them yesterday when it seems like the wicked wins that is so not true it is deception they don't win when god gets ready to cut them off he's gonna do just that and we can take solace in the fact that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous so god is telling abram look here's the furnace Here's the flame. 
They're going to go through. But hold on to my promise because I will surely bring it to pass. And then he says, I have given this to your descendants. It's done. And when God spoke that, even though it may have taken years and years and years for it to manifest, it was already done. When God speaks a thing into your life or in mine, it is already done. Yes, it takes time for things to manifest. But that does not mean it is not already done. So if you're in the fire this morning like we are, if you're going through afflictions this morning like we are, hold on to the promises of God. And when you don't know what else to do, what did I say? You worship. Worship in the fire. Study the word in the fire. First Peter 5 and 10, after you suffer for a while, God will perfect you and settle you and establish you. We were out there in those projects yesterday. And I was like, it seemed like it was hopeless because as we were walking around, people didn't want to talk to us. You know, it was a, it was a group of us. And they're like, who are these people? And it seemed like we weren't going to get a good response. And it was hard and it was scary. Sirens going by, ambulance going by, police cars going by, you know, people walking by, children out there. It was just a whole lot of stuff to take in at one time. And we were walking out of the building. I was like, you know what? If we can just find a soul in the parking lot, I'll be thankful. And so we were out there. And this young lady and her son walked by, and her hair was braided. And I was like, I like your braids. Knowing I'm really after your soul, but I did like her braids. And she said, thank you. And she kept walking. And then some more people on our team said something else to her. And the next thing I know, they were calling for me, saying she's agreed for prayer. I was like, yes, I can do that. I can do that. I went up to the young lady. I was like, your hair is so cute. Because I got a second look. It was really cute. And I was like, what can I pray for you about? But this is what I said. I said, what do you want God to do in your life? Introducing God. What do you want God to do in your life? Share the video. She said, I want, I want to get out of here. Anybody just want to be delivered? It was just a sincere plea. She just said, I want to get out of here. And I was like, out of where? Chicago or out of here? She was like, out of these projects. This is not the place where I need to be. I want to get out of here. And I was like, don't you know there's nothing God can't bring you through? Don't you know there's nothing? And I'm telling you this morning, Word Nation, I'm telling myself. Don't you know there's nothing that God cannot deliver you from? I don't care how hot it is. Remember they had the fire, the furnace turned up. Well, it was like seven times hotter or ten times hotter. I think it was seven or ten. I can't remember. Come on, Bible scholars. How many times hotter was that fire? Seven? For Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had it turned up higher. And sometimes it'll be turned up higher because the purification process has to be deeper because of where God is going to take you. And she just said, I just, I need to get out of here. And I said, God can deliver you. And then I said, are you saved? Is the Lord Jesus your personal savior? She said, well, my family grew up Jehovah Witness. I said, but are you saved? I said, are you a Christian? Is the Lord Jesus your savior? And she said, no. I said, don't you know today can be your day? I'm so happy on the inside. I'm jumping on the inside, but I got to stay cool and calm on the outside. I can't get super spiritual and scare off. And then basically, I said, don't you know today can be your day that God can tr begin to transform your life or you just give him something to work with? And something inside of her broke. I felt it. I felt it. And she dropped her head and she said, yeah, I'll do it. She said, you want to come inside? I was so after her soul. I said, yes. We went into her apartment and we prayed the house down, y'all. And the Holy Spirit filled her up right there on what they call murder drive. And her little boy came to Jesus Christ. And in that moment, when those two souls accepted Christ, it was worth it all. It was worth our trip from Mississippi. It was worth walking the streets of Chicago. And, and it showed me how much God loves me. And how much God loves you. And how much God loved her. That he was sending us. Charlene was with us. I mean from Virginia Beach and from Mississippi. And some other warriors found us. And they joined in. And I, I couldn't tell you where we were. Because I didn't know where we were going to be. And in that moment. I knew that I could have been in danger. I didn't even care. I just wanted her to come to Christ. And she did. And, it was, and she just cried and cried and cried. And she said. I know God sent you. In this moment, I know, she said, you just don't know, but I know, I know it was God. And that's what we want, Warrior Nation. Moments like that, when you don't know what somebody's going through because they're in the fire and you show up, not all super spiritual and spooking people out, but when you show up 
it with genuine love and you say, you know what this, and you just extend that love. And when people are broken and they're tired and you show up right in the nick of time, they'll accept Jesus. I've seen it happen too many times. But I also want to encourage you, listen, we have to exist for something above ourselves. So, yeah, we're going through. Y'all know I'm going through. But guess what? I'm after souls. I'm after helping y'all get to the promise. Like, and that's more important to me than any trivial matter, because I just trust that God will work out my lightweight stuff. If I stay for focused, Matthew 6 and 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added. So we just focus on advancing his kingdom. If we focus on evangelizing the gospel and sharing the gospel, spreading the word, the word says everything else that we need, he'll add it. Anything that's missing, he'll fill it up. So yes, we're going through the fire, but we have to hold on because we actually don't have a choice. And so in these moments, like when Abraham was going through, when God was saying, this is what's going to happen to your descendants, but I'm going to bless them in the end. Type it in. God is going to bless me in the end. We talked about in the end on yesterday. In the end, I will come out victorious. Internalize that. In the end, you will come out victorious, not even smelling like smoke. That is God's promise to us. In the end, we will have the victory. And so if you're going through today, hold your head up. God is the lower of our souls and lifter of our heads. There is nothing that God cannot deliver you from. If you need to be delivered, say it. Lord, I need to be delivered from this. But I need you to understand that this deliverance is not just for you. There are people waiting on you. Type it in. There are people waiting on me. I'm not just saying that this morning. There are people waiting on me. When I wanted to give up, many times I've been tempted to give up. But recently when I wanted to give up, I was like, I can't. Because the warriors are waiting on me. If I crumble... What hope will they give y'all? My aunt messaged me yesterday. She said, Kelly, I saw the video that you posted on Sunday. And she said, when I, I saw it and heard about it, she said, I was like, if that kind of thing happens to you, then what hope do the rest of us have? She said, but because you didn't fold, you didn't break under pressure, you actually given us more hope than you realize. And so when you're going through the furnace and you want to give up, you can't actually. Because if I can't give up, neither can you. And when God brings you out and you're stronger and you're better and the anointing on you is even deeper, you're going to realize why you have to go through that experience because we already know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So this is not the time to give up because if I can't quit, neither can you. But it's bigger than you. It's so much bigger than you. And if I gave up, then what about the, the lady and her son yesterday? They wouldn't have come to Jesus Christ because I was would have been too busy having a pity party about my own life. No, no, it's bigger. You have to understand that it's bigger than you and it's bigger than me. It's so much bigger. Yeah, so let's go through it with the assurance that is found in the word of God. And also with his promise that he's going to deliver us. I hope this blessed you this morning. God fights our battles. And I literally will say, okay, Lord, you want me to do this? And he's made it quite evident that he does. Then I need you to handle my lightweight. Because I don't have time to fight with people on a natural level when there's, when there's so, so much more out there. And the only reason why you're going through the little fights that you're going through is because the enemy wants to keep you off course. And he wants to distract you from your real enemy. Levon is not my enemy. That's not my true enemy. I have an enemy who wants to stop the warrior nation. That's the real enemy. And I recognize that. And so my focus has shifted because I recognize who my real enemy is. And maybe you should pray this morning. God, show me who my real enemy is so that you won't be distracted with trivial matters because those trivial matters are not your real enemy. There is an adversary who wants to sift us as we? He wants to take us off course. And I'm telling you, he wants to stop what God is doing. And not only what God is doing, but what God is about to do. Because it's monumental, it's massive, and billions of souls are going to come to Jesus Christ. And the enemy wants to stop it because his time is running out. So go through your affliction. Go through it. Hold on to the light of the word of God and know that he's going to bring you out. Say, Lord, show me who my real enemy is. 
and when you recognize that your heart will soften towards the face uh, that the enemy is using because you realize this is not your real enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's, that's not your real enemy. We have an enemy, the prince of the air, and he wants to shut this thing down. He wants to shut your life down. He wants to shut your mouth. He wants to have you so bound that you couldn't dare tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. But the devil is a liar, and he is under our feet, and nothing can stop us now. Type it in when we go into prayer. Nothing can stop us now. I told you, we're going to stay on the bus until we get the jet. That's what we're going to do. Let's go into prayer. Thank you for saying you can relate to this, Chris. It's a powerful word straight from the Holy Spirit because your girl is tired. It's like I do even better when I'm tired because it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. We walked the streets all yesterday. When it was time to get up this morning, I was like, you're kidding me. But I got up. We put one foot in front of the other. And we're doing this all over again because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. And it's about souls. Father, we love you. We praise you. And we bless you. We're going to endure this season of difficulty, this season of affliction. While we hold on to your word, because your word is our light, and it gives us life, and it gives us hope, and it gives us peace, and it gives us strategies, Father. And we just thank you for the light of your word today. Let that word always pray at the end, but let me just say it now, too. Let your word be hidden in our hearts. We will not sin against you. Father, we love you. And I ask you now to go for the warrior nation and make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight and bring every high place low. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. The word of God, it never said that the weapons would not form. They will form. And it may even look like it's going to take you out, but it will not take you out because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that's risen up against us shall be condemned. Father, enlarge their territories. Lord, you have to. Because we're funding wars and we cannot do that if you don't enlarge our territories. We cannot do this thing if you don't give us favor. We cannot do this thing if you don't give us wealth and wisdom to really be able to do the thing that you've called us to do because it's so massive. And so, God, I thank you for enlarging their territories. I thank you for granting them favor. I thank you, God, for giving them wealth and wisdom. I thank you, God, for giving us all good health that we'll make the right decisions so that we can run this race that you have set before us with diligence. And not only will we run to the finish line, we will run through the finish line. Father, we will not quit. And we thank you for this morning. God, touch the hearts of the warriors today to give, to support this ministry. And as they do, Father, I ask you to increase them even the more, Lord. Multiply every seed they sow back to them at least a thousand times over. God, you said in your word that the generals will prosper and those who are fresh, others shall be refreshed. We thank you for the refreshing that is taking place right now, Father. And Lord, we thank you for the promise that you've given to us who tithe. You said in your word you owe me the windows of heaven. And pour out a blessing we don't even have room to receive. And God, we need that overflow to make an impact in our community, an impact in the nation, an impact in the nations, Lord. So we don't have to worry about how our bills will be paid, Lord. That there will be such an overflow, Father, that we can really get behind kingdom projects and we can fund wars, Lord God, that will make a difference in the earth realm, God. And that it will just change the trajectory of soul that will come to know you all over the world. That is our prayer today. And as we step out, God, into this dark and perilous world today, who are your full armor? The better truth around our waist. Lord, the breastplate of righteousness, God. Y'all see it. I got tangled up. The helmet of salvation. Sandals of peace, Lord. We carry the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is your word. I started seeing those streets again as I was praying. I couldn't even get it out. Father, we thank you for even your word. God, let it be hidden in our hearts. We will not sin against you, Father. We just thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. And we dare not walk out into this world without your full armor, Father. And so we just thank you this morning for all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you are about to do. I just keep seeing those streets. And Father God, there's so many people out there who don't know you. And if you're out there this morning, you don't know Jesus. Like I could just see it. It just took me somewhere. And Lord, I just thank you this morning that there's somebody out there that will see this video and they'll accept you. And that there's you this morning. The Lord is not your savior. Please do not let this day pass you by. All you have to do is say, Father God, I'm a sinner and I desire to be saved. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died, he was buried, and he rose on the third day. If you simply say these words, Jesus, come into my heart. Warrior Nation, type it in. Help me out. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I need a savior. I need to be rescued. I need to be delivered. I need for my life to have purpose. I need this. I need you, Jesus. It's what's missing. I need you in my life. I'm empty and I'm tired of feeling empty. I'm tired of feeling lonely. I'm tired of feeling depressed. I'm tired of having suicidal thoughts. I'm tired of having homicidal thoughts. I'm tired of trying to fight my own battles. If that's you this morning and you know you're not accepted Jesus Christ, all you gotta do is say, Jesus, Come into my heart and save me. I need a savior. The Bible tells us that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please don't let this day pass you by. Warrior Nation, I love you all. 
If you made the decision today, thank you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are too. Hang out with us. We pray, we believe, we love each other. Uh, we get behind other ministries and charities that are doing a great work for God and we help them get there. And so please, we'll be back on every morning at 6 a.m. A quick announcement. I'm doing a radio interview this morning with Moody Radio. Y'all have heard of Moody and the Moody Institute. I'll be doing an interview um, this morning with Moody Radio. It'll it'll air. I'll go Facebook Live while I'm being interviewed. I'll come on at 10 a.m., around 10 a.m. Central Standard Time while I'm here in Chicago. The word got out and I have an interview. So I'm thankful for any opportunity to shed light on the gospel, to shed light on Jesus Christ, and to tell the world what we are doing as a ministry because we are powerful and we're giving God all the glory. And so that's at 10 a.m. So I'll come back on live at 10 a.m. And if you miss it, you can go to Urban. What is it, Brittany? Um, Urban, Urban Praise. Urban Praise is part of Moody.org. MoodyRadio.org. If you missed the live, you can go um, to Urban Praise at MoodyRadio.org at 1, and it will re-air uh, at 1 o'clock. So that's where we'll be today, this morning, doing that interview. Uh, I ask for your prayers with that. Y'all, don't forget, we're going to be buying this house in India in just a couple of weeks. If you're not giving to that, please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Give your best offering. Give what you can, and God is going to bless you for it. And just know this is a seed that will turn over as long as the earth remains. Several easy ways you can give. Um, the easy way on Facebook is the blue donate button. Also, y'all can use PayPal using the email, give at kellylane.org. We have a, a text phone number, and that number is 601-844-0024. Uh, you can also send it through the mail. Uh, make any check of money order out to Warrior Nation Ministries, P.O. Box 16257, Jackson, Mississippi, 39236. And what else? You can go to kellylane.org. You can donate there, which we call it an investment. You can invest there. Also, if you need prayer for anything at all, please submit your prayer request on kellylane.org. You can go down to where, where you can hit the Warrior Nation tab, and you can see a place to submit your prayer request. And our internet prayer team is ready to pray for you today. Also, don't forget to go by the store. Uh, we have our staff there. We have Thad there in the store making sure everything runs good. My sister's there making sure everything runs good. So we ask that even though we're in Chicago that you still support Warrior Apparel. This is how we're able to do what we do. So remember, you can save 50% using the discount code SAVE50, S-A-V-E-5-0. And don't forget, I am woman. I need you all to register for that. Uh, we're going to release those shirts as soon as we get back. They are ready. Uh, ladies, please come. Please bring a friend girl with you or two or three. Uh, let's show up. God is going to move. I'm going to share some more details with you all about some things that's going on with me at I Am Woman um, for the advance of the kingdom. Not for any other reason, but to help you and help you get set free like God has set me free. So make sure you register for that. There's an event in Facebook. If you're going, please come over and click that you're coming. And also you can go to kellylane.org and click events and register there. You can also find it on Eventbrite. I Am Woman, Kelly Lane. It's going to be in New Orleans on October 12th and 13th. There's plenty of time for y'all to get ready to come. Come on and come. Let's fill this place up. We're believing God for a thousand women. And I believe it's possible because with God, all things are possible. But we won't get there if you don't do your part. So please register for that. So I love you all. Let's keep pressing. Uh, let's run on and see what the end is going to be. Hold on in the fire. It really does get better. I love you all. Have an amazing day. Register for I Am Woman, okay? Thank y'all. Have a great day. I get it all? Okay. Bye, y'all.